And welcome back. You know, there's one thing that all parents have in common, and that is that they worry about their kids. And number one, are they safe? That's right, or are they happy? But something alarming is happening with our children. More of them are being diagnosed with depression or anxiety. So how do you know if your kid is having a mental health problem, and how do you help? That's what we'll discuss in tonight's Chris Six special report. You just are like all lost. You feel so overwhelmed. You just heard from Dee. We altered her voice, name, and appearance to protect her identity. I'm 10 years old. Dee is like many kids. I like to read, like books. She makes shadow puppets, and she suffers from panic attacks. One time it happened at lunch, and it was like really loud in there, so it was really hard for me to calm down. Dee has panic disorder. Your heart is like the, the, the. The Anxiety and Depression Association of America describes panic attacks as a sudden feeling of fear or being uncomfortable. People having an episode experience heart palpitations, they sweat and feel short of breath. Those symptoms can last up to 10 minutes before the person experiencing them feels some relief. That's stressful for anyone, but imagine how that feels to a child. Dee's not alone. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, 20% or 1 in 5 children ages 13 to 18 have or will have a serious mental illness like depression or an anxiety disorder. Researchers say that that number is eight times greater than it was decades ago. I do think with social media um, and technology, I think that that has definitely increased stress levels among children. Dr. Jennifer Gerlach is a licensed school counselor and professor of counseling and educational psychology at a and Corpus Christi. She says adolescent depression can be influenced by genetics or certain situations, but regardless, there are clear symptoms. If they're withdrawn, if you've seen, um, you know, a major drop in their grades and um, if they're losing interest in things, sleeping more, I'm not sleeping at all. But detecting depression isn't always black and white. That's why Dr. Gerlach tells parents to ask their kids how they're feeling. It can be really challenging to identify um, the differences between depression and what's developmentally um, normal behavior or typical behavior in that age range because there's, you know, there's moodiness, there's irritability, there's, um, they withdraw maybe because they're asserting their independence. Also, symptoms vary depending on age. Older teens can can be a little bit more expressive about it. Younger kids tend to be more isolated. Abraham Rodriguez, counselor at Driscoll Middle School, works with 11 to 14 year old students. Age group is basically dealing with an identity crisis. So developmentally, they are looking for who they are. They're trying to discover who they are. That's why early treatment is key. It just leads to, to better outcomes because you're, you're getting it earlier. And the, old, the longer it goes um, being untreated, mm -hmm. you know, the, the worse it can get. That's what Dee's parents did. They took her to a doctor who diagnosed her with panic disorder. Dee takes medication and says that she feels better knowing what she's dealing with. I feel really calm and I don't feel so as overwhelmed. And we're really happy that Dee is feeling better. Um, if your child is experiencing something like this, take solace in the fact that there are resources here in town. There's the Antonio Garcia Center, which is run by A&M Corpus Christi. Uh, that facility offers free counseling to children, adults, and families. And there's also the Counseling and Training Clinic, which is um, on the campus there at A&M uh, Corpus Christi. We're going to have all this information for you on our website, christv.com, by 10 o'clock. And we'll be right back after this.